Welcome back to the Academy of Higher Learning. This is Introduction to Python tutorial number five. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about string mutation. And I have a few examples. I'll try and get through them, but if I can't, I'll put it in another video and link it in the description. So please take a look at those. I guess the first thing, oops, sorry. I guess the first thing to mention is the methods that you could use on strings. And there are two ways that you can see them. One is to, I guess three actually, one is to write any string. So let's say that's a string. And this will provide anything that can be used on this type of variable. You could also just write dir str. And so this list of, I guess, methods it produces, this is everything you can use on a string. You could also just go to Google and type Python str. And here you can see a list of all the methods as well, as well as, you know, explaining what they do. And some of them even provide an example as to how to use them. Okay, so back to Wing. Let's define two standard variables. Let's call word one hello, and let's call word two test. And let's just make a sentence. This is a short sentence period. Let's add the period. Okay. So there are a few methods I'll get into, four of them actually. And the first one is this one. It's called st uh, it's called upper. And what it does is it will convert whatever string you've put into uppercase as done below. As shown below, sorry. Another way to show it is to prefix the variable. So if you write word one here, word one dot upper, and you leave this part blank, and you run it, you'll notice you get the exact same answer. Most of the methods actually use this notation simply because you need to put another variable or something else in here. So I'd encourage you to use this. The next one, or the next method I'll show you, which is s.find or string.find, and this does require you to enter something in here. And what this method does is it'll search for whatever you enter and it'll print the position it's at. So if I write print word1.find el, it should return something because el is in word1. And if I write te, it should return something else because it's not in. So we know for a fact that this is going to return a position. So let's just. And we know for a fact that this is not going to return a position. But what find does, if it doesn't find the word in the other word, or if it doesn't find a string in the other string, it'll return negative one. And you'll see this as below. One and negative one. You would think that, you know, it would return two because E is number two. But I'll explain, I guess, how positions in a list are formatted a bit later on. So the next method I'd like to introduce is the split one and this is particularly useful for sentences but to show you first I'm going to use it on a word. So if you write split and you write el what this does is it will split the word at el and it will also take out el. So you should have a list with h and lo. So let's run that you notice you have, whoops, oh sorry, that's because I messed up this variable. So if you run it, you get H and LO. If you were to split it uh, to test, you now you note that test is not in this word. So it'll try and split it, but it won't find test, and so it'll just produce this word in the list. Okay, let's try and split the sentence, and let's split it at A. So you'll notice that it should make this into a list, which it did, and the next should be this, and the last should be this, which is exactly what it showed. The key point, or I guess the best point of split, is to use it to split a sentence into a bunch of words, which can be easily done using either this, which is including nothing in this I guess, 
in the uh, brackets there, or the other is to just include a blank space. And so if you run both of these, you'll notice that you have all the words. Now a problem here is it includes the period. And when you want to split words, you usually don't want the period. So a simple solution to that is, now if you want to take the period out of sentence, out of sentence one, then what you're looking for is to use a substring. And actually, I'll explain that first before I get back to this. So if you have your word one, and to refer to substrings, you want to do it in boxes. So you have I and you have J. Right? Let's comment this just because it isn't actually valid. And what you should know is that this substring will it'll include everything after the ith character and it will include everything before and including the jth character. So if you were to type word one let's say 2, 4. Now, according to this, it should include everything after 2. So it should be part of these three, and everything before and including the fourth, which is this L. So you should get LL, -L, which when you run, oops, sorry, let's take these out, and, or actually let's just comment these out since I'm referring to those, and let's go print. So once you print this, you notice that you get LL. You could also take out one of them, either the I or the J, and what this does is it will print everything before and including the fourth character. You could also do it the other way, print word one, let's say two. This will print everything after the second character, but not including the second character. So let's run those, and you'll see that it printed everything before and including the fourth, and it printed everything after the second. The last thing, I guess, is calling or referencing a single character in a string. So let's say you were to write word one three. Now what this should produce is just one character in a string, which is L, which is right here. Okay, so now that that's done, I can get back into this. So if you want to print a sentence without the period, what you want is, oh, I guess one more thing I'd have to speak about is the length method. And what that does is the length of a string. So if you take the length of word one, what you would get is the number of characters word one has, which in this case is five. So that should produce five. Similarly, the length of word two should produce four. Let's try those out. And you see five and you see four. Okay, so that's done. Now we can actually go back to this. So if you want to get all of sentence one, except for the period, you're looking for sentence one everything before, but you want to cut it off with the last character. And the last character is the length of sentence one, minus one. Okay, so what that does is that should give you everything except the period. And what you want to do is you want to put that right here. So now you're taking all of sentence one minus the last character and you're splitting it by spaces. So you'll notice that this produces everything except the period. Woohoo! Okay, so the next method I want to talk about is is alpha. And so you can take word one is alpha. Or actually let's print this. So print word one dot is alpha. This is blank. And what that does is it should print true if word one only has characters from the alphabet in it. If it has anything else such as a period, a plus mark, a number, it should print false. So let's just test this with word two. And I'm saying that this will print false because I'm going to put a two right there. So let's run this. 
and true and false as you can see. Okay, so the next thing is just general string mutation. You can add words together, so print s plus t, s plus t and what that does is it concatenates them. So you notice hello test 2, all in one word. Oops, sorry, it's not. I'm referencing another document, which is why I looked at s and t. So word 1 and word 2, and you'll see hello test 2. You can add it again, word 2, and you'll see hello test 2, test 2. Note you can also multiply them. So if I were to do times 2, to print hello test 2, test 2, you could also, for example, multiply this one by 3, and you could get hello, 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 test 2, test 2. You can also separate these variables by commas. And what that does is instead of concatenating them, it will kind of, it will put a space in between them. So you'll notice hello, 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 space, test 2, test 2. Okay, so I guess the last thing to inform you about is how to put quotations inside of a string. Notice that most of our strings were referenced like this. And so let's say you had this is a, and you wanted to put a quote in here quote. But you now you'll see that this isn't actually in quotes because this is one quote and this is another quote. So the workaround for that is to use single quotes for your outside one. So this is a quote, quote, single quote, sorry. And when you print that, you'll notice it works as it should. Okay. One thing I should tell you about it's in regard to the substring command when we were referencing, let's say, S3, or sorry, word 3, word 1, 3. Now you'll notice that this produced the L, right? What you cannot do, and I want to stress this because a lot of people try and do this, is say word 3 is equal to, and you could just substitute it with a T this command or yeah this function would not work it would produce an error because python is not capable of just interchanging them like that or i guess let's put this in quotation just to prove my point again see error it does not support item assignment okay i guess i guess i'll give you the workaround for this as well so if you want to insert it, what you could do is uh, word 1 is equal to word 1. Let's get everything before 3 and let's add the letter which in this case was T and then let's add everything after 4. So that should produce We'd have to print word one again, sorry. Print word one. Okay. And you'll notice that that essentially replaced the middle word, or the middle letter, with a T. Okay, so that is done. I guess since we're running out of time, I will go through examples in another video.